Our next contestant comes from Thomas Keeble School. And, uh, oh, they, they're an actor. They, they're proudest moment, main part in a play. So we know they're comfortable on a stage. But are they comfortable on a stage talking about science? I bet they will. Let's introduce contestant number nine, and that's Gracie. Gracie, welcome to the stage. Take it away. Memory, a word so ingrained into our species that it defines who we are. If we lose our memories, we lose ourselves. But what actually is it? The ancient Greeks imagined that memories like imprints on a wax writing tablet. Now, most people imagine memories are like books in a library or files in a hard drive, physical things that can be retrieved, a reliable source of information. But how true is this? Memories are created when connections are made between two neurons, brain cells, meaning that chemicals called neurotransmitters are produced. Repetition strengthens these connections, so the more you practice something, the easier it becomes. This is known as firing and wiring. What we think of as a single memory is actually split up into several different parts, such as sights, smells, and sounds, called trace memories. These are stored in different parts of the cortex in the brain, almost like separate pieces of a jigsaw. A sensory input, a trigger, causes these different parts of the cortex to fire, sending signals of these separate chase memories to the hippocampus, a different part of the brain, where they're then reformulated. The hippocampus completes the jigsaw, which is then sent back to the cortex for long-term storage. Therefore, memories are not in the past, but they're in the present. We remember in the present. So our memories are not some carefully verified libraries of information ready to be retrieved, but instead think of them like hundreds of faulty Wikipedia pages that can be edited or influenced by you or other people each time you access it. Warwick University showed 20 people who had never been on a hot air balloon ride before fake photos of themselves in the balloon. Over half of the people believed that they had been on the ride, and some even added extra details. Even more concerning, research in the US showed that out of 300 wrongfully convicted prisoners, three quarters were convicted due to inaccurate witness statements. Our justice systems depend on people's memories, but can they even be trusted? So, the next time you have to rely on your memory, whether that be in court, trivial pursuits, or a heated argument. Just remember, would you trust your own Wikipedia? Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Gracie. A wonderfully memorable presentation. Um, Daniel, let's go to you first of all. Any questions for Gracie? Yes, yeah, memory, really interesting topic. How can we remember more? What techniques can we use? So there's a thing called um, it's externalizing. So basically, it's like writing lists or putting something in the same spot every single time. It's like habit. So it means that you're not really relying on something which, to be honest, isn't that trustworthy. You're relying on like something which you can look back at and you can look back at it and check again. And so it's like reassurance there. Yeah. Very good. Okay, excellent. It's getting some tips as well on how to remember things. Um, <laughs> Rachel, let's come to you for some questions. So, I mean, brilliant topic. What, what is it that got you interested in this as a topic to present? Um, well, to be honest, my dad was actually listening to a podcast about it, and he was talking to me about it. And it was about this man who, I've forgotten his name, um, but he was like, um, he was like this guy who was like, I think he was a journalist, and he went to his country and he was telling everyone about what he saw in his country. And it wasn't his story at all. It was somebody else's, and he was so convinced, like so, so convinced that it was his story, and he got in loads of trouble for it, like loads of trouble. And he was like complete disgrace, his whole career. <laughs> and it turned out he, he, that's like what he believed. But literally all of these people, all these politicians were like, how can you do that? How does that even work? Like, and yeah. 
And basically, he just completely forgotten it because our brains, I think it was actually someone else's that he was um, reporting on, um, but our brains process like um, false memories in exactly the same way as real memories, which I found like really interesting. So yeah, I just find it really interesting how unreliable this thing we see as like gospel is kind of. So yeah. Okay, excellent. False <laughs> memories. Uh, well, we, we will always remember you as being fantastic. Thank you very much, Gracie. You can head back down the stairs. Thanks. A massive round of applause.